Scripture reading this morning is taken from Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. The parable of the Good Samaritan. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Sermon this morning is titled Perspectives from Good Neighbor by Elder Sri Yenjai. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. How are we doing? Good. Okay, we'll see how deep and why the love of Christ is going to be from um, the um, good neighbor. So I'm going to change from the poopy to sitting here. Is that okay? That's all right, huh? Okay, so um, what may we learn this morning from um, the parable of a good Samaritan or a good neighbor? So while going through this, you know, last week, I was contemplating of how deep I should dive into the history. I know some people will enjoy it. And maybe a few more. But during the last week on the Thai uh, Bible study, um, if you were here, um, we talk about um, God's inheritance. We talk about the Samaritan. We talk about priesthood. Um, so if you weren't there, you missed it. Sorry, I can't repeat it. It'll be too long. No, no, no. So afterward, I discussed with um, Pastor Peter as to the material that we presented today. And I conclude that um, my sermon should only be about an hour long. So if you need to uh, use a rest, you know, take a restroom break, uh, go ahead and do so. And then as we have a lot of material to cover today. But um, since um, it's closer to, lunch, closer to lunchtime, I'm um, kind of hungry, so we'll cut it short. I'm sure that you, uh, you know who um, the lawyer that, um, that the story was referring to, right? Should I explain? Yes? yes? Okay, briefly. So the lawyer back then, you know, I mean, he didn't have the, his law firm on EC Street. He, um, he was a person who studied and well-versed in uh, the Old Testament and Moses' commandment. How many commandments, roughly? Okay. Ten? Ten? One hundred? Two hundred? Six hundred? Six eleven? How about six thirteen? Okay? So, um, and should I explain the work that, must, that you must do to inherit an eternal life? I should. Okay. So, inheritance can only be given, not earned. 
Um, as such, you cannot work your way into eternal life or salvation. Eternal life is a gift, free gift from God. Um, we uh, last week we use uh, we use example of um, uh, Grandma One Pen. Would you raise your hand? Grandma One Pen. Okay. Grandma One Pen has two children, uh, Oak and Orwin. Okay. Um, there will be three person who will get the pre inher her inheritance. Oak, Orwin, and Oliver. <laughs> Because she loved Oliver. Oliver is a little um, four-year-old that went around. So uh, you cannot work your way in order to get her inheritance. How about the Samaritan? You know who they they are, right? Should I explain? Oh, okay. The Samaritan uh, nowadays, you know, is being associated with you know good people, the volunteer, and um, the organization that help people. Not so in Jesus' time. See, Jesus' time, it was, uh, if you remember when we talk about um, the story of, you know, when Joshua brought people over uh, uh, into Canaan, in between uh, the half tribe tribe of Manasseh and uh, Ephraim, there's um, the uh, Israelite and the, the people, the older people, and they became like half free, okay? And the Jew looked upon these people. And you may remember in John 4 that Jesus used uh, the good Samaritan woman at where? At a water fountain? The well. Okay, there was no fountain back then. Okay, let me explain the, the road from Jericho to Jerusalem. Okay, so the road from Jericho. Who here has been to uh, Red Rock Canyon in Vegas? Raise your hand. Red Rock Canyon. How about who here has been to Mount uh, Rubido in Riverside? You track them, right? So basically, it's a small trail, okay? From Jerusalem to Jericho. Um, where's Jericho again? Jericho is when the Israelites conquered, right? They walk, they didn't use a cannon? No. no, okay, so they walk around and they shout and the wall fell down. Okay, so we know that's Jericho. Is like a seaport, okay? So they uh, people will track 17 miles uphill, okay, uh, about 3,000 feet. So they go about three quarter of a mile in 17 miles. So they walk in this little um, path, maybe about 10 feet wide at any one place. And this is the desert, okay? Uh, some call this um, path uh, a way of blood, as you know, blood has often been shed. By water. So imagine in this setting, a person who went to um, Jerusalem to, to worship at the temple walked back and you know got robbed. Okay, so this is very um, kind of a it's not you know walking the park. It's, it's very dangerous. Alright. So um, now that we know the brief history of towns, um, we can uh, take offering and uh, and go to lunch. Okay, so what haven't we heard and what we don't we know? What may we learn from the robbers? What may we learn from the, the priest or a Levite? What may we learn from a good Samaritan? And how may we use this in our uh, daily life of service and in preparation for his second coming? First, Lesson from the robber. What was the intention of the robber? <coughs> to rob and steal, right? And was it his to take? Ah, thank you, Abby. So John C. Maxwell called this what mine is not mine, and I am going to take it. So that's our first perspective. So the robber took something that wasn't his, right? Maybe robbers, so there. So this is a sinful desire that we have all embedded within us. Um, I want his house, I want his car, I want his wife, I want this and that, that's not our. So I know we don't have to touch on this because none of us in this room have that perspective, right? No, okay, good. 
we'll jump on to the lesson from a lesson from a priest and a Levite. On verse 31, now by chance a priest was going down the road. When he saw that he passed by, he saw him, he saw that a dying man. He passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to a place, he saw him, him meaning the dead man, the dying man, passed by on the other side also. So how wide is the road? Ten feet. So, so, you know, I mean, you're just walking and you see the guy dying there and you kind of just scoot over. You can just maybe almost touch him. So during Jesus' times, the priests do not live in Jerusalem. They don't have an apartment there, okay? Uh, they usually live in the outlying city, town. They went up to Jerusalem uh, twice a year to, to service in the temple. Both the priest and the Levite were said to be from the tribe of from what? Levi. Great. Yeah. And they they didn't inherit any land, so they have to work, you know, in, in the um, in the temple. So every time the, the priest, you know, came to the temple to carry out his service, okay, his purity would have been um, tested by a group of um, priests and a Levite. A priest would have been physically examined for any impurity. As we have seen in, um, or have heard in uh, Numbers 19, priests must avoid a corpse impurity. What that means is that touching a dead or dying body, even hold a hand over a dying body, would render priests ritual impure and put his temple service at risk. So he has a good reason, right? Not to touch a dying man so that would risk his um, you know, week of service. Have you ever heard this term? What is in it for me? You know, okay, good. So you usually go like this, okay? Say, hey James, would you do me a favor? Your response would go something like this. That depends. What's in it for me? Right? I'm sure you don't say that, right? When somebody asks for help. Imagine you ask Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus, would you help me on my homework? Or would you help me at work? And then he responds to you, depend, what's in it for me? How would that make you feel? To a priest, you know, he thought to himself, if I stop, I may have to go back to a temple. It meant the whole week of service would have been a waste. On top of it all, I may be late for my meeting with my fellow priest. To a Levite, you know, I don't know if there's anything against him for, uh, you know, to stop and help. Um, he may play his trick, you know, by a few hours or even a day. That would have been acceptable, right? Very inconvenient. So one thing that you may remember that a priest and a, a Levite, they know scripture well, right? Okay. They know that love the Lord your God and you shall love your neighbor from Leviticus. It seemed to me that at times we have too much head knowledge and lack of Heart knowledge. So we know too much. We may be able to recite Bibles like the prayer song, but at the same time, we can't put it into practice. And John C. Maxwell uh, called this what mine, what's mine is mine, and I am going to keep it. This is the theory of a reservoir. If you have ever seen a small reservoir, the water is, is it clear? It's green, yucky, smelly. There's no movement in water. And that's a place that a mosquito would come from, right? 
what mine is mine and I'm going to keep it. After all, it's all mine. I work for it. Even though it's smelly, I don't care. If I give my time, my talent, and even my money, it will delay me from getting to my goal in life. That's a good lesson, right? We all want to be successful in life. Now, a lesson from a good Samaritan. A good Samaritan saw a man who was about to die. Just like a priest or a Levite, he stopped, ran the aid, and even placed a dying man needs before his own. How much did he pay? Two denarii to the innkeeper. How much is a denarii? A day, a day's wage of labor. So if you convert that to today's term, what's that like? A hundred dollars? Should we say a hundred dollars? That's about right. Yeah. So a lot of us here earn a lot more. We're just gonna look over the hundred dollars, okay? So today what the work is about two hundred dollars in today's economy anyway. Now let's not even talk about two hundred dollars. Even a hundred dollars is is a lot. So two hundred dollars would be double a lot. Right? right. Dub double the lot. Yeah. Okay, right. Thank you. That right is a teacher, so yeah, if he said okay, I'm okay. <laughs> Jesus gave us an illustration uh, of a, a Samaritan man who has given his all to a, a dying person. This dying person could have been a Jew, another priest, or another Levite. But it didn't matter. He stopped his business. He read an aid gave his belonging to guarantee for future help. And he even put his name on it, right? He didn't say that he put his name, that I'll come back and pay for it. So let's stop here. If a Samaritan's name was good enough, don't you think he had a good credit with the innkeeper? Presumably, the good Samaritan also probably had a pressing business in Jericho that he must attend to, otherwise he would have stopped and helped or stayed longer. As such, he entrusts a dying man to an innkeeper, an innkeeper who took on the role of a good Samaritan. So John C. Maxwell called this, what's mine is your, and I'm going to give it. A priest, a Levite, and a Samaritan were on the same road. They all saw the dying man. They all have a reason not to help. A priest would have risked his service time. A Levite may have had an important appointment to attend to, perhaps another religious ceremony, maybe a church conference, that he may be late. A Samaritan, presumably, a businessman would have lost his precious hour by helping stop and help. Though a Samaritan has a different perspective entirely, he gave up his time and finance for this dying man. Let's put it in today's context. A Sunday school teacher, a faithful church member, notice I say member, I didn't say uh, a faithful church member, a Christ follower, I said a faithful church member and an illegal immigrant passed by a dying man on the way to church. I'm sure both Sunday school teacher and a faithful church attendees or member pray for a dying man. Father, please send somebody to help this dying man. For our reading today, an illegal immigrant stopped and help. I'm sure this is few questions in a program to his mind. If I don't help, what will happen to him? If no one helps, a man will die. 
If I don't help, what will happen to me? If I don't help, I will slowly be less helpful, less generous, and eventually I'll have an indifference heart. If I do stop and help, what will happen to me? If I help, I'll give up myself to other people. I'll start to think about myself and more about Him, Christ the Lord. So a good Samaritan has a perspective of what's mine is your and I'm going to give it. Why did a Samaritan give? I've heard this quote. A joyful giving can only be experienced after the fact. Meaning that you will not experience the joy of giving until you have done it or have gone through it. Similarly, it's been said that obedience can only be understood on the back end. Meaning God will not allow you to learn the lesson pre-obedience. So you must obey first and then you'll get the fruit of being obedient to Christ. When we're on that subject, we may jump quickly to a lesson of free will giving. Do you know what's good about free will giving? If you truly give and truly obey and it doesn't work out for you, what's that mean? You can always go back and be disobedient. Folks, giving is not a requirement for salvation. You will not inherit an eternal life by just doing that. You can't do that by being a good person. However, loving and giving is a byproduct of loving Christ. Because you love Christ so much and your life has been transformed, you are inspired to love and give, just like Christ has done for us. Right? Now, we have an exercise and I need a volunteer from a congregation. Volunteer? Somebody said, Joe? May I have a volunteer, please? Joe? Okay, Joe. Okay, Joe, may you come up, please? Okay, Joe. <clears throat> Let me grab this microphone. Okay, I need your help, okay? Okay. <clears throat> You have a wallet with you? No. No. Yeah, I have a wallet. Yeah. Or <laughs> a wallet from um, Brian. For a demonstration. For a demonstration purpose. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Joe, say that you you want to overnight a package. Okay. It's very doable package. To to a congregational member, and I am your postal carrier. Okay. 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 Here is an envelope or package that Joe wants to overnight to somebody. Now Joe noticed that this lady has been working tirelessly for this little church in Covina, okay? And you want to surprise that person with a little gas money, okay? Uh, this time you take money out from his wallet, okay? Uh, oh, yeah, ATM. And put them um, a pin in there, okay? Okay. I'll give it back. <laughs> well, he'll give it back, but I don't think I'm gonna give it back. So um, you want to send this ATM to uh, that lady at church, okay? Her name maybe so Betsy. Okay. 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 So Joe want to send his ATM. You forgot the pin number. <laughs> I'll put down four right now. Okay. So one, two, three, four. Okay, one, two, three, four. That's good enough. So Joe will want to send this um, package to Betsy. Okay? Good so far? Yep. Okay. So you can help her, right? Sure. Me, as a postal carrier. Oh, she's getting a few dollars worth of stuff. Sorry. 
Ah, thank you. <laughs> so, um, I have two kids. Uh, they want to go to college. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, um, Betty, Betsy already has a grown kid, and she probably doesn't need that, this money. <laughs> so, I think I'm going to just keep it. Yeah, it makes right. sense to me. Um, makes sense? Yeah. Okay. So, you, as a sender, okay? Package to Betsy is not getting to her. What's your feeling? Well, it's not great. <laughs> it's not great. Are you mad? Well, I put faith in you to deliver it, and you didn't. He put faith in me yeah. to deliver it. Uh huh. And so yeah. I'm but but I have better reasons. Well, in your eyes, sure. <laughs> I have better reason to keep it because I think I need it more than Betsy. She only volunteered at church. She, you know, I mean, she paid for her own gas. I mean, I have two kids. Yeah, I got you. You know? Hi, Sienna. <laughs> I think she still needs to go to college, right? <laughs> so let's recap. What's yours is mine, and I'm going to take it. <laughs> That's the message, yes. <laughs> What's mine is mine, and now it's mine, and I'm going to keep it. And the third one is. What's your, what mine is your, and I'm gonna give it, you see? But instead of delivering this one to Betsy, I'm gonna keep it. Okay, we'll come back to it. Thank you, Joe. No problem. Okay. Get the I, I, do, I do need the car back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Get the okay. Our, um, a fourth uh, perspective that I know all of you here have. Fourth perspective is what is mine is not mine and I'm going to manage it. A good, a good Samaritan demonstrate that perspective as well. Let's internalize this together. What is mine Presumably mine is not mine, and I'm going to manage it. You see, when, when Joe entrusts a package to me, right, it wasn't destined for me, nor is mine to keep. So what right do I have to keep it? I'm just a messenger. Right. You see, in Proverbs 11, 24-25, it said, One give freely, yet grow, grows all the richer. Another withhold what he should give, and only suffer want. Whoever brings blessing will be enriched, and one who water will himself be watered. Folks, we are not created to be a reservoir. God created us, created us to be a river that blessing may be flowing through us. Knowing such, do you want to serve while you're full of energy or on your deathbed? Not that you cannot do it anyway. And I also heard that it is better to give while you're living so you know where your giving is going. Okay? And we learn from the last two perspectives that what mine is your and I will, I'm going to give it. And the last one, what is mine is not mine and I am going to manage it. And let me put that into today's perspective. Say I am the ma a manager of Matt Yenjai company. This company is owned and funded by Christ the Lord. This company provides many services, handyman, financial services, engineering services, or even biblical consultancy. It is my desire to do whatever it takes to get a good customer service feedback. Can I mismanage the company? Well, you bet again, and I've done it. I've done it several times. 
But God was so good that he allowed me to learn from him. And I know that if I can't manage a small task, God is not going to let me get into over my head. But the question I have for you is that, are you managing company that Christ has created for you well? You may be running a nursing company. You may be running a food business. Whatever that you do, is Christ well represented? No matter what you do for living, you can represent Christ every day in your life. I don't know about you, but when I go home to be with Christ, I want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servants. Since I don't know when it is, I have to be ready to hear that phrase at moment's notice. Are you ready to meet Christ? If not, what's stopping you? Dave Ramsey, a financial guru, um, biblical financial guru, say that if you pay yourself first and God last, your finance and priority is upside down. Can't say more like you're screwed up. Mean that if you give God your leftover, bring Him your tired self, bring Him your leftover after you pay your mortgage, your car, and your vacation, bring to Him after you have done all the above bucket list, only then you have leftover for His ministry, then you gotta think about it. In 2010, we put that theory, remember I said, try it out, if it doesn't work, you can always go back. So in 2010, we put that to a test. Just you know, I said, Dave, hey, okay, let's see if this biblical finance is gonna work out. We've been doing it for eight years, and we're still testing the theory. And I'm, I'm, I was strengthened by our member here, um, Fa Bunsi, who's not here today who's in her 80s and she gave her all to Christ. She has the right perspective. My giving more doesn't mean that I'm a better person or a better Christian than you are. It's just showing me that Jesse and I have the perspective that we own nothing and Christ owns it all. Another question that I have for you is, are you a river that Christ's blessing may be flowing through you or are you a reservoir full of good things? I want to encourage you that no matter what happened in the past, Christ doesn't hold it against you. You may be a reservoir, but if you allow Christ, he will dig a big canal so you'll be a, a large river of blessing. It is never too late to rededicate your life to Christ today. Never. He loves you and always wait for you to open your heart. Trust in Him and allow Him to use you for His glory. So, brother and sister, go and be likewise. Go and be a good Samaritan. Would you pray with me? Father God, thank you for sending us that only good Samaritan, Christ the Lord. He picked us up even when nobody wanted to waste a day of time with us. We were naked and he closed us. We have sinned and he paid for it all. As such, may the Holy Spirit help us to be a good manager of his time, his talent, his finance, and always reminding us that it is not our to keep, but it's our to give and manage. In Christ's name, amen.